Hello viewers and welcome back to Humans in 5. Have you ever watched one of those criminal investigation TV shows where a scientist just looks at a human skeleton and says, that skeleton belongs to a 36-year-old woman who was right-handed and played tennis? Did you ever wonder how scientists could tell that much about a human skeleton? In today's Materials and Methods, we're going to talk about how a scientist can read a human skeleton and what key skills are involved in analyzing human skeletal remains. There's many ways we can do this, but today we're going to talk about sex estimation. Biological anthropologists, forensic anthropologists, and bioarchaeologists are trained in many different disciplines that relate to the human body. These include human anatomy, skeletal biology, and physiology. Each of these fields looks at the human skeleton in a slightly different context. For example, forensic anthropologists examine skeletons found in criminal investigations and events of war and genocide. Bioarchaeologists examine the skeletons of people who have been found at archaeological sites. But whether they are looking at the skeletons of people who died 500 years ago or six months ago, these scientists have to understand what makes a human skeleton unique. First things first, a human skeleton is a person. Human skeletons are to be treated with the same care that you give to a living human being. Think about it. Would you appreciate it if someone was mistreating the remains of one of your loved ones? No, we wouldn't appreciate it either. Equating human remains to a human being gives us the opportunity to think about the range of variation we see in skeletons, just like the range of variation we see in living people. The human skeleton is many things. It is an anchor for our muscles and the protective case for our brain and our organs. It is also a living tissue. It is affected by our physical activity, our diet, and changes during growth and development. For example, the biological sex of a child skeleton is very difficult, if not impossible, to identify prior to the hormonal changes that take place with puberty. Also, humans are not easily put into categories. We are just not male versus female. In human skeletons, traits that can be used to estimate biological sex exist on a spectrum. Some individuals look extremely masculine or feminine, but most fall somewhere in between. So when we talk about indicators of biological sex, they don't actually indicate whether someone is male or female, only that their skeleton tends towards one or the other ends of the spectrum. In addition, just because someone is biologically male or female does not mean that it corresponds to their gender identity in life. So, with all of this taken into consideration, researchers and forensic specialists start by looking at parts of the skeleton that tend to have more noticeable differences between biological sexes. These traits are usually found on the pelvis or hip bones. The female pelvis, pelvis has a wider angle at the front underneath the pubic bone. The pubic bone is the bony bit above your bits. The same angle is much narrower in males. We can also look at the pelvic canal, which is where a baby would pass during birth. Since females give birth, this space has to be wider amongst females than males. In the skull, we can look at the brow ridge, or that bit of bone just above your eyes. This tends to be more projecting among males. Areas where muscle attaches to bone tend to be larger and more rugged in male skulls than in female skulls. And finally, individuals more towards the male end of the spectrum tend to have really pointy chins. As we said before, these are general trends along the spectrum between biologically male and female, but in their most exaggerated forms, they can look a little like this versus this. As we've said before, humans are a complicated and diverse bunch, and we know that these are estimations. That's why people working with human remains need to understand humans inside out. This is just a little window into one of the many things we can learn from skeletal remains. Just like a living person, there is a lot more to a skeleton than meets the eye. See you next time on Humans in 5.